Um, I don't think there's any secret that I differ with uh, the uh, Obama administration on a lot of matters of health care policy. Uh, and uh, obviously, the issue of Obamacare remains one very controversial. Uh, but if there is anyone that I trust uh, to try and navigate uh, the challenges, it is Marilyn Tavner. And I feel that strongly about her, and that's why I'm here. I'm delighted to be here and uh, say that I strongly endorse uh, your confirmation of uh, President Obama's nomination of Marilyn, Ka Marilyn Tavner to be the next administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. On Monday, April 1 this year, 3.42 p.m., Height Security sent an advisory that told their clients of the CMS Medicare Advantage policy decision and that they supported related stocks. Um, the consequence of a political intelligence firm having access to this information 18 minutes before the market close is astonishing. In the 18 minutes remaining uh, trading minutes, on April 1, the volume of Humana, United Health Group, and Aetna stock was more than a half a billion dollars. Uh, more stock in those companies was traded in those 18 minutes and throughout the rest of the day. When information leaks from the administration that has the ability to cause significant market movement, it is wrong and quite possibly illegal. I've asked that the Office of the Inspector General be brought in on this issue as well, because we need a third impartial, if you will, uh, review of this. Um, CMS, I take a lot of pride in the staff at CMS, and this is not something that, that we want to happen ever. And so we will do a thorough investigation and we will give you feedback. Um, many of us met with um, some, some experts, at least they thought they were experts in healthcare economics, and they are experts. Um, and one suggested quite strongly, I won't mention his name, but um, you will certainly know him, if I were to mention his name, that um, CMS could do a better job and move much more quickly in moving from uh, fee-for-service um, reimbursement more to um, reimbursement based on quality and outcomes. They're just very slow. So I asked the question of this person, well, what can be done? And this person said, well, CMS should do it. Just set a deadline. Like 10 years from now, 90% of reimbursement will no longer be fee-for-service, but it'll be um, you know, based on, based on quality, whether it's through the ACOs or bundled payments or whatnot. But it felt very strongly that, that somebody needs to light a fire under CMS. They're just not moving fast enough. Chairman Baucus, that, that's interesting. You know, I hear the opposite concern, needless to say, from uh, consumers in the industries that were moving too fast. What we're trying to do is take a measured approach. We certainly have made more changes, and the Affordable Care Act gave us a lot of that authority to do so, to get away from fee-for-service and move more to whether it's, you know, payment for quality or avoiding the, the readmission. So I think a lot of work has gone on in the last three years, and, and I'm proud of that work. Now, the Society of Actuaries recently released a report in which they estimate that health insurance premiums in the individual market will increase 32 percent on the average nationally and in Wyoming specifically. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners released a paper just in the last week that outlined steps states can take to mitigate expected rate increases due to the health care law. In fact, the NAIC paper concludes that states, quote, should begin evaluating these and other strategies immediately in order to mitigate the rate increases when the major market reforms take effect in 2014. What's CMS doing to address the risks identified by that report and, and other reports? Senator Nancy, first I would say that we don't uh, agree completely with the actuary report, and, I, and I'll give you some reasons why. But I'll also remind this committee that while I have great respect for actuaries and work with them daily, these are estimates or predictions about things that we don't know for certain. And, and I'll take us back to Part D and some of the estimates around Part D that I think we ended up being like less than 40 percent of the uh, original estimates for the cost of Part D. So I would just caution us about uh, taking the word or, or the reports of actuaries as more than just estimates or speculation. 
But having said all that, there are some things in the Affordable Care Act that I think mitigate any type of insurance increases, and I'll, I'll try to talk about those. But I'll talk about them in three areas. The first area is when individuals talk about premium increases, I think they would have you believe that that's the entire insurance market. And I'll remind you that what the Affordable Care Act is dealing with is a small market or an individual market, so less than 20 million max. Uh, large employers are fairly exempt from the requirements, and large employers have seen the most modest increases in the last three years that they've seen in some time. So I think our overall strategy, both in government and in the private sector around controlling costs, is, is seeing some bearing some fruit. Um, the second issue, in addition to the size of the market, it does not take into account those uh, pieces of the Affordable Care Act that actually work to decrease. Uh, first of all, there's the issue of the tax credit, which is obviously applied to the premium. Second, there's variety in plans, so you can have a bronze or a silver or platinum plan, which changes it. Third, there's the availability of catastrophic coverage for individuals up to 30. Fourth, there's the issue of dependent coverage, where, where thanks to you all and the work in the law, we are covering individuals up to the age of 26. And I could go on. There are issues around reinsurance. If you remember, you put $10 billion into a reinsurance pool for the next three years with the idea of mitigating any type of premium increases. The rate bans that we have, there's a long list. And I, and I won't bore you with the entire list, although I'm happy to give it to you. We have it. Uh, the third area that I would say is a reminder to folks, and I think we saw this some um, in the Time Magazine article, insurance is not necessarily insurance, as we all tend to think of it, having worked for large employers and having pretty robust insurance policies. Some of these, if you will, um, low-cost premiums were low-cost for a reason. They didn't really... Uh, offer robust insurance, as many folks found out the first time they had to be hospitalized or they were diagnosed with cancer or another disease that required a lot of treatment. So, as you can tell, I feel pretty strongly about this, but I would not agree with the actuary assumptions.